Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 22 and uh, this is the start of two chapters chapter 22 and 23 on um, magnetism and magnetism related topics so we'll begin by talking about the concept of uh, what is called the magnetic field now some of the properties of magnets have been known for many centuries um, you know the best uh, example of uh, magnets that you know of in life uh, is the compass and the magnetic compass is dependent on the fact that you know you have a freely suspended magnet and it's going to come to rest pointing uh, north south uh, the ends of the magnets are you know said to be poles and the point a uh, pole that's pointing to the north is called the north seeking pole and the other guy is going to be called the south seeking pole so how does this work now right like you've seen this in many of uh, you know kids toys and refriger refrigerator magnets you've seen it in uh, door catches uh, what is this? Well, basically, you've got uh, some kind of an attractive uh, force or you've got a repulsive uh, force. Uh, being, extend, uh, being exerted by one magnet on another. Um, and uh, what we've learned uh, from that is, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, laws, so to say, of uh, magnetism are that unlike poles uh, are going to attract right and uh, like poles are going to repel so pretty straightforward um, what does this mean though it means that around any magnet there's going to be a region where a magnetic pole is going to experience some kind of force uh, so this region is known as a magnetic field the interesting thing is that the magnetic field uh, in, a, in and of itself is not visible but you can represent them using uh, magnetic uh, field lines or lines of magnetic force. Um, so how can you visualize this essentially? Well, a simple way of imagining a magnetic field line is to think of one uh, such line as the direction in which a free uh, magnetic north pole would move if you place it inside the field. Um, so in this way you can plot uh, magnetic field lines uh, using a small uh, compass uh, or by the use of uh, iron filings and uh, a compass. What do I mean by all of this? Well, let's, uh, let's look at this diagram. Let us say that you have a magnet that looks a little bit like this, right? And um, you've placed it on a piece of paper and uh, on, uh, I beg your pardon, you've placed a piece of paper on top of this magnet and on that piece of paper, you've put some iron uh, filings, right? So the shape that these iron filings are going to take will look a little bit like this. Well, you're gonna have essentially a line of force going from the North Pole to the South Pole, you know, in, in kind of, I'm drawing the arrow, but you're gonna uh, essentially look at it uh, the, on the piece of uh, paper with the iron filings that look a little bit like this. You're gonna see a similar pattern on the other side, on the underside of the uh, magnet as well. So the arrows are kind of showing that if I put a North uh, if, if I put a uh, free north pole on this line, anywhere on this line, it would move in the direction of the arrow. Um, you're going to have also like, you know, some lines that are kind of going out, sorry, like this. You're going to have some lines that kind of, you know, go out this way. And some that are coming in to the south pole in that uh, manner. So that's what a magnetic uh, field line is and I'm going to write the definition here for you. Now I want you to understand another thing. I have not included the effects uh, of the Earth's magnetic field in this uh, diagram that I've drawn because the Earth's magnetic field is relatively weak uh, and would only be of importance at some distance uh, from the magnet. Now it's also important for you to realize that I've only drawn this in two dimensions. The actual magnetic field is going to be uh, in three dimensions. So if I was to draw it and this, imagine this, this is, you know, um, coming out of the paper, the blue line here, right? That is essentially what it would look like. Uh, so this is a 3D representation. The blue line here is intended to be in a different plane than the, the red line. Um, so the actual magnetic field is three dimensional. So any magnetic field, the lines are gonna, uh, the magnetic field lines are gonna start at the North Pole and end at a south pole and the lines are smooth curves which will never touch across each other and the uh, strength of the magnetic field is going to uh, indicate um, it is going to be indicated 
by the distance between the lines. So if you have closer lines, that means a stronger field. So I've just written this down here for you um, to reinforce the point. Now let us look at a few different kind of scenarios. Uh, so we, we've just shown you the field around one magnet. Now let's look at uh, what the pattern of these lines is gonna be around two magnets. Okay, so let us assume for a second, you know, you have a magnet here, there's the south pole, and you've got another magnet here. I'm not drawing the whole thing, that's the north pole, right? So what do you think uh, the field pattern is gonna look like? Well, it should be, quite simply, it should be going from north to south, north to south, north to south. Again, you know, there might be some curves in there as you kind of get away from, uh, from this guy, right? Like maybe a bigger curve up here and a bigger curve there. So that's what the pattern is gonna be uh, between the North Pole uh, of uh, one magnet and the South Pole of another. So what about a slightly different scenario where I've put this magnet in reverse. So I've got a North Pole here and I'm gonna keep this right-hand side magnet as it is. So I've got a North Pole there as well. So what in, happens in this kind of a scenario? Well, remember, the line of force should be going from um, the, uh, the uh, from from north to south, but I've got uh, two uh, two magnets that are end to end like poles. They're both north poles, right? So uh, if we use the red color again, what you're going to find is well, it's going to start off at north, uh, but it's kind of going to go in this direction, and again in this direction. And I'll draw something like this again here, right? So these lines are going to be going away and again once again from this guy also you're going to get a similar kind of behavior so you are um, you're going to have north to south lines going in in such a manner um, why is this the magnetic it's because the magnetic field due to one magnet opposes that due to the other now the field lines can't cross right so consequently you're going to have a point here which i'll call x and x is what we call the neutral point. Essentially, it's uh, uh, it's a point where there is no resultant magnetic field because the two fields are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Let's consider a different scenario. So let us let me assume for a second I have a circular magnet, you know, so maybe a disc essentially, and I've got the north pole up here on this magnet, right? And around this magnet, I've put another magnet. It's surrounding it, right? And let us say for the sake of argument that in, in between these magnets, you have like an air gap. And this magnet is, this surface of the magnet is the south pole of the magnet. So what do you think the line of force is going to look like? Well, again, you are simply going to go from north to south, right? So this entire, in this, the way you're looking at it in this plane, the, the surface that you're looking at is fully the north uh, uh, pole for the inner magnet and fully the south pole for the outer magnet. So the line of force, very simply, is going to be, you know, just radial. They're going to be in the, in, the, uh, in the direction of the radius itself that you're looking at. So... That's, uh, that's how the line of force is gonna shape up in this kind of uh, scenario. So that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, in our next video, I'm actually gonna flip the, the uh, syllabus around a little bit and I'm gonna talk about first magnetic fields due to currents before talking about other things that the syllabus wants to talk, uh, us to go through. So we'll talk about the magnetic fields due to currents first. I'll see you in the next video.